episode 84 of Community Service Hour, broadcast live <laughs> on Twitch and YouTube and Twitter Spaces and broadcasting not live on Spotify, iTunes, and wherever else you get podcasts. Right now, I'm working on a blog post, first of a new series called Dumb Business Ideas, where I look into the folder I have on my computer, which many of you also have on your computer, and instead of just harboring these dumb ideas forever, sitting there waiting for the light of day, I am just jumping straight from the idea past the product to the announcement. So instead of just having these dumb ideas, I'm going to announce these products that don't actually exist. The first one is ready to go. It's called Rainbow Mask. It is a copy of MetaMask, so it just takes all the security out of MetaMask. Why would you want this? Because sometimes when you are on these Web3 websites and you're trying to do cool stuff, it just blocks you until you log in with MetaMask. I think that's dumb. Blur used to do that. Log in and tell them how much money you have and connect it to your account, connect your account with your IP address. And also there's a huge security risk of just training people to click anything that pops up on their screen anytime they load a web page. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we just have a browser extension that just randomly creates accounts, clicks yes on every signature request, and just does this silently in the background. And that is Rainbow Mask. But I didn't feel like building that product because it wasn't as good as other things I could do with my time. So I just skipped over all that building crap and just went straight to the announcement explaining what I just told you. <laughs> well, pretty I, soon you can probably feed this to an AI agent and it'll build it for you. And it feels great because <laughs> mm -hmm. I've got a whole bunch of these. The idea is fully there. It's out there. And it should now be live on the blog. What's the call to action at the end? And uh, it says where to get it. Click here. And it just goes to Twitter. And then the next line, it says that it doesn't exactly exist, but <laughs> they're just going to click. They're not going to read the next line. That's their problem. <laughs> so, so Dan, what's in your dumb business idea file? I actually don't have one. All my business ideas are great. So my definition of a dumb business plan is any business that hasn't made money yet. <laughs> so all ideas are dumb ideas, and then they make money, and then they're great ideas. I did have one dumb business idea a while ago an operating system that felt like uh, uh, an rts game so like you're getting attacked by directories that are coming at you <laughs> yeah. while you're yeah why have a cursor when you can have a sword yeah sword when you move files around they like march there are units that march from one place to another <laughs> visual interface for an os could be different more playful, less efficient, but maybe more engaging for people. And another one is called Enlightenment. That's a competitor to, this one used to have a lot of bitch in visual effects, not quite RPG, but you could definitely <laughs> get like shadows and reflections on your desktop, a lot of fun stuff, which hasn't changed. Yeah, it's not, really different at all. Another one you have is Pop OS. This is from System76. This one's actually pretty cool. And I know it doesn't like look even cooler, but everybody happens to love the way that Pop does it. Because <laughs> you, oh, this is why. A, because it has keyboard shortcuts. And then B, it kind of maintains this grid thing which mm -hmm. you don't get with Windows or any of the other stuff. It looks much more customizable. Yeah, and Linux people like to shove a lot of stuff on their screen and, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, Windows 11, if you like square edges, looks cool. And if you like ads and all, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff about it, but... <laughs> if you like ads. Like, you hit the start button and it's like, look at all this stuff. Good morning. My it has a feed. It has widgets. Does it have Bing Bing chat yet? Yes. Well, there there should be a health bar that uh, decreases over time, oh, and health. you only get health. yeah. 
you get more health when uh, ah. when you view an ad. Yeah. You can only you can only click so many times in a day. <laughs> <laughs> there's a counter that goes down. <laughs> Dude, there's a limit to how fast you can type. <laughs> yeah, you have to pay more to unlock. <laughs> Get boosts. Wow. Let's check out Tahoe. So Taco, ta Taco, Tahoe is a competitor to mm -hmm. MetaMask. So, so let's install Tahoe. Let's see what this is. This is a fully open source Web3 wallet. Competitor to MetaMask. Already that's a value proposition, but the way that they introduce themselves is beautiful NFT gallery. So somehow viewing your NFTs. That's number one. Yeah. Interesting. Because NFTs are the only important part of blockchain. Ledger that mm -hmm. actually works. I still get emails every day from scammers that got my Ledger email address. Way cheaper swaps. Tahoe swaps are half the price of other wallets. No hidden fees. That is a value proposition because they're going to make money when you swap things. Yeah. And 100% open source. Okay, that's a nice forebrick of value propositions. They're telling you to use Ledger. So they're not targeting everybody. Not everybody uses Ledger. You should use something like Ledger or Ledger, whatever. So like, let's look at MetaMask. Their value proposition is like, somebody told you to install this and here's how to install it. Straight to download button. Buy, store, swap tokens. Explore apps. Own your data. Okay. Goes into their GitHub stuff. Right to merge. They have merge on their homepage. That's how you know business isn't booming. <laughs> All right, so let's coming soon, leaderboard, coming soon, Mev, coming soon, social recovery. Okay, so cool ideas, cool coming soons, no target date like Q3, none of that. GPL v3, okay, that's copy left. Let's get it, let's see what it's like. So try it in Chrome. Usually I block a lot of these. Wow. Oh, oh well, so this is how they make money, I guess. The, well, they they're sell connecting your data you to every too. network. Like, yeah, are they selling our data? Well, I mean, to like Masari, people right. that do research. If you want to preview Tahoe, you can start by adding a read only account on the left side of the page. Oh. Because <laughs> it went to mobile mode. Yeah, if you, there you go. Okay. Okay, so you can type in an ETH address, ETH, ENS, or unstoppable name service. And it's validating it. And then it's going to let you try it. So I'm previewing. So here are all the different networks. Add a network. But it only says connected to Ethereum. Right, so it's doing Ethereum stuff, but it is sending our data to polygon and everyone else mm -hmm. chain link is the fastest way how does this work that's kind of cool so it's it's letting you rather than having you type in yourself which could be a disaster mm -hmm. it's giving you a button and i like that it is built into the wallet obviously you trust your wallet 100 percent. and then those people are giving you this place called chain list which is spelled wrong Good. Why do you have to go to this other website? Yeah. It's so weird. Like if you're adding, if you're in a bank account and you're adding currencies, you want to do transfers in. It's just, it shows you a list of currencies and you click one. <laughs> Why so should, should it be, a... be any more complicated? Let's fix this. Okay. All right, we made a little PR. So there's no pop-out button. So on MetaMask, you can actually pop out this thing and it will take up a full browser tab for all your stuff. This is kind right. of like more like a mobile window where there's like not enough stuff to fill the whole screen, but MetaMask mm -hmm. is kind of cool with that. So let's see 
what else is in here? So here's us. It got a name. I guess I guess the photo is from NS. What are the settings options that we have? Default wallet. Connected websites. So every time you connect and it shows up there. Custom assets so you can add your own contract addresses. Yeah. Okay, so I, we only have Gorley at this time. There's another one. Oh yeah. I got all kinds of money on Gorley. What's up? <laughs> Big stacks. You could sell that. Yeah. Although I, I don't retire. what's the faucet situation these days. It's it's rough, so that's why I told him. I said, "Look, um, can you just give me like a million of these so I can give them out?" And they're like, "Yeah, no problem." <laughs> because the faucets are a disaster. What are the other pages? I know there's the so-called uh, these these buttons. There's a lot of dead space everywhere you're clicking on stuff. There's a lot of like clicking all over the place like it's hard to click on things like click 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 click, click I mean it's clearly built for mobile yeah portfolio okay so I like how there's little pop-ups yeah, at least there's telling you see your abilities this is kind of cool so they're looking out for me and they're telling me if I qualify for any of the upcoming things I don't know why I need to click to do that like sometimes if you if you're somebody who traded on OpenSea, then you'll get an airdrop from OpenSea. Or if you ever did an ENS, you'll get a something, you know. Read only accounts can't see abilities. But you just told me I could. If you can, which I can't, we recommend you import the address you want. So they're saying if you have multiple wallets, they want you to import the other addresses too. Okay. Of course they do. Yeah, why not? And then I, I added all those things on, so I like passed ones, and still I didn't even get any of those. So that was weird because I know that I've been eligible for these type of things before. Maybe it's just not querying yet. Yep. NFTs. Okay, this does look nice. It's, um, I guess we'll see. So here's a voxel. So it shows up. It doesn't jump me out of the page. It's got a very nice, this is this is solid. Rareable, looks rare in OpenSea. So, okay, so yeah. NFTs. Oh, badges, which are they are calling as a separate thing. So these are popes, I guess. C NFTs have collections, badges have badges. View on pope, board bagels pope. Ethereum org website contributor on Pope. Okay. They still have the floor price for badges. Hmm. How? Or is it just they're maintaining the UX for NFTs? They forgot to take it out. Can you have a floor price for badges? You can't trade them, right? Maybe there's different kinds. Maybe some of them you can. Is it showing NFTs from other networks? Is this a chain? Okay, so this is an Ethereum icon in the corner, and then this is a polygon. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was one. There, yeah. What's I like the that. red one? Oh, that's polygon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this little thing in the corner. I like that. I do like they combine multiple chains. That is definitely how all these things should work. Yeah. Nobody should know the difference. Yeah. There's no like reputation score or like, is this spam or, cause there's a lot of spam tokens. They're very easy to send, especially on other networks. But I guess you're sorting right. it by floor price anyway, so. So and there's no some... need for a fancy spam filter. <laughs> uh, except this nifty emoji is showing a floor price of a ether, which the way they could do that is they could just create an account list the sale price as eight ether and then just don't have eight ether in your account. So the sale could never actually close. Hmm. Oh, so even if the transaction doesn't go through, it'll still get that floor price. Yeah, so some service provider is providing floor prices, but they're not taking into account the fact that the person who made the offer of eight ether doesn't have eight ether. Smart yeah. play by the nifty emoji people. For sure. To be honest, I don't, it, it doesn't make me feel like there's much difference at all. It's like incremental UX improvements. 
I agree. And it's an open source, I guess. That is a, but it's not. I mean, even if it was the same it's thing, not but open bring source, new people in. No, it's not going to bring new people into using blockchain. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not enough it's, crazy, awesome stuff. And this is not a huge just, market. You know, NFTs and crypto is not yeah. a huge mainstream market. It's just quality of life improvements over MetaMask. Yeah, there's no like buy Ether button, which is a major quality of life thing. Oh, and, and nowhere. Legal risk. I like how it's giving me information. But you about can't do anything thing. with this. Oh, right? no, you I can log in. No, but but you can see that it at least isn't a crap software. Like it, it at least knows my NFTs. It found my stuff mm-hmm. on different networks. Um, I can click through all these. Like instead of reading their webpage, I can actually see, oh, this is what a swap looks like. And to be honest, mm-hmm. you know, before you type your seed phrase into something, I do, especially something that's not as mainstream as the number one mainstream item. It is nice to see that it actually is a sufficient quality product and has has GitHub behind it. Mm-hmm. But it looks it looks not bad. Yeah, slick UI. I like the color scheme. Yeah, keep it up. Yeah.